Hi everyone, today is May 14th, 2019, and this is Bright Vlog number 14. So what happened? Okay, so as I'm coming to you now, the spring semester is over. Um, yes, I know, I shot one vlog all semester. Um, correction, I posted one vlog all semester. I shot other stuff. I just didn't post it for a myriad of reasons. Some of that footage you'll see today. Um, and some will be lost to the, the dense ends of my computer. But, um, what, what's really going on today is me trying to explain what the heck happened, um, this past semester in, at Bright Divinity School and in my life. Um, quite a bit happened. Some good, uh, some very bad, and some is left to God right now. But, um, we're going to be explaining that today in this vlog. Um, but right now, um, I have been... Right now, I am have on the mission of packing up my apartment, sort of, because today I am heading back home to Lubbock, Texas for the summer. This is my first summer without classes in a long time, and my brain needs the rest. My brain definitely needs the rest, so we are celebrating um, Tender Mercies today and um, getting you updated on what's going on at Bright this past semester and what's been going on in my life. So let's get on with the vlog. I was young, still at home, and my mom would call me down the street, through the trees, and I'd run back towards that sound. Where I knew thin love was waiting Caught a flight, chased a dream Never second guessed it On the run, didn't stop Saw the edge and had to jump I still feel like I'm the same kid So why the mirror say I'm not? So the ironic thing about that song and this kind of whole thing is that this is the house this is the house that my dad grew up in. Um, I'm in Rawls, Texas right now. We're about 30 minutes um, east of Lubbock. Um, it's about 5 o'clock in the afternoon. But this is the house that I kind of lived in when I was born. Probably up to the point that I was like five year, about 5 or 6 years old. And um, not all the time, but this is kind of my home. And it, no one's lived in this house for about 10 or 15 years. Um, my dad's trying to restore it. Um, there was once... One of these right here was once right there as well. So we've done a little bit of work on it. Um, but yeah, this is where I started. And I always try to come back here um, every time I can just to kind of like get some sort of, just try to gain some perspective on, you know, where I've come and where where I'm going. I mean, this is where I started. I started in this shitty little house and this house wasn't this that bad when I when I was growing when I was growing up. It was still in recent de decent condition. Um, but yeah. Also, here's the irony. That building right here, that's a funeral home. <laughs> um, I don't know how long it's been there, but it's ironic that the house I grew, the house that I grew up part of the time in, um, is right next to a funeral home, and right across the street is a friggin' Methodist church. So literally, the house that my fam, my family house is literally cat a corner to First United Methodist Church in Rawls. Uh, considering where we are now. Um, that's ironic. Uh, but yeah, this is the house I grew, I grew up partly in. Um, like I said, did not look this bad. Um, but like I said, it's always good to have perspective on where you're coming, where you're coming to see where you're going. And, um, I'm excited about the summer. Um, I have a lot of things I want to do. Um, some stuff I'll talk about as this vlog goes on. Um, and maybe shoot, may see some shooting of it. But, um, man, it's been, a, it's been a long, tough semester. And, um, um, as you can see, if you see, we've got a beautiful, beautiful day. It's a beautiful day in Texas, but there have been a lot of days in the last five months that have not been beautiful. I mean, the weather in Fort Worth has been terrible this semester, um, which is kind of part of the story that we're going to tell here. But, um, I'm just going to go ahead and finish up this drive. It's, it's, we're about 30 minutes away from Lubbock and home. So, we're going to finish that drive, and we'll be back be back to you later all right so i've been home for a couple of days now and this is 
my parents' backyard in Lubbock. Actually, if you can believe it, um, this is actually this backyard a little bit cleaner than usual. So, my dad is basically a hoarder, and uh, um, he likes to hoard things. Like, there's three, there's like two or three bikes here, and no one here rides a bike, and there's a lot of barbecue grills, and even though we only use, well, this, this smoker right here gets used, but that little grill we do most of our grilling on. So, um, yeah, this is my parents' backyard, and I've been here for a couple days now, and everything is going well so far. But, um, so, but really, we want, you don't really want to hear what's going on right now. You want to hear about what's gone on. You want to hear about what the hell happened with me this semester when I only made one vlog the entire semester. Really, I only, only made three vlogs the entire school year. Um, so, what happened this semester, it's a mix of a lot of things. Um, one of them I'll talk about right now is sometimes when you have bad classes, it can ruin the entire semester. And I had a couple classes that I just did not enjoy this semester. One of them was a class in Anglican Theology. I quickly figured out I didn't need to be in that class. I was able to drop it. Professor understood. No harm done. But the second class that I was in that I really did not like, um, I won't talk about what class it was. I won't mention the professor's name. I won't say um, what it was. I will say what it was one that I was required to take, one that I was really looking forward to, and one that I considered to be really, really important. But, yeah. And what, what, I'm, what I'm about to say, it says nothing about... This 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 professor as a person, um, to me, the professor that um, taught this class that I that I didn't like, um, she's a great person. In like a one-on-one -on -one situation, like if you needed, as a if you if I, I as a future pastor were to come to this pastor for advice, I'm sure that she would give me great advice and be able to lead me through something a situation like that. And um, that's a gift that a lot of people have in pastoral ministry. But just because you have that gift in pastoral ministry doesn't make you you're going to be a good teacher. And in this class, which is very important in practical worship, and we don't have a lot of classes at Bright. It's where you take the things that you've learned, all the theology, all the ecclesiology, all that stuff, and actually have a practical class to apply it to your everyday ministry and your everyday church settings. So classes like this are really, really important. And the teacher was not competent. That, that's that's the honest truth. This teacher was not competent to teach this class, and it showed in a lot of different ways. Um, so, Bright does have some trolls. Bright does have some people that are in classes, and they are there to disrupt it. They feel they feel they're oppressed in some way, um, and all these people are, are usually white, cis, het, privileged people, and they go and they go in to disrupt. And a lot of them are atheists, and a lot of them are agnostics. Um, why an atheist is at seminary? Please, still, if someone has the answer to the question, why would an agnostic go to a Christian seminary? If someone has the answer to that question, tell me the answer because I do not know. But they go and they troll. They act like, you know, they, they go play knockout games like people do on Twitter. And this teacher didn't know how to handle it. This teacher would let the trolls get to her and let them disrupt the class. And most people at Bright will not will not call a troll a troll. So that was a problem. And then, oh, this one. And then there was an incident one day where a, a student in their very first semester at Bright, and it takes a while to really learn the ropes at Bright. It's not a place you get, just get. You gotta learn the ropes. This part, this student who was in her first semester at Bright and the professor got into a really stiff confrontation about biblical literalism and things like that. And the teacher, the professor did not handle the well. The professor got in her face. Like, when I say he got in her face, as close as this camera, as soon as, so close as I'm holding my phone in the camera, this is about how close they were. Not, not too much an exaggeration. And it was crazy. It was, it was so crazy. By the time, by like, by the time an hour had passed, most everybody at Bright had heard about this incident. And it was just, it was crazy. And, um, this compared, and then the way she structured class, the way she took forever to grade, um, it just was not, she was just not competent to teach that class, and that class ended up ruining a whole lot about my semester. Um, so that's part of the story, and we'll get to the rest of the part later, but, but as you can see, I gotta go work out. This is basically where I live during the summer. <sighs> gotta lose those pounds. Baby, after all this growing up, I'm only good at being young. Alright, hey everybody. It's about two weeks since I last recorded that. Um, it's 
May the twenty seventh, eight, so something like that. Um, so why am I why am I recording so much longer, and why am I on my roof? Well, I'm on my roof because it's I've we just got a new roof and I haven't seen it before, so I thought I'd come inspect it just to, just to see it. Plus, I live in a we live in a flat roof house, so it's easy. So, but I was wondering how do the reason I haven't recorded anything in the last few weeks is I've been wondering how do I express. How do I convey what happened at United Methodist General Conference 2019? How do I convey the pain? How do I convey? How do I make people understand that? And um, also, how do I um, how do I really break that down for for non Methodist people? The system of what happened is, is in a lot of ways a lot really complex, and you know I spent a lot of time studying it this past year, so um, it, it it's been a difficult thought process, and probably why I've um, not recorded this part of the vlog till now. So let's see if I can try. All right. So the United Methodist Church, the way the United Methodist Church is governed, it's much, it's modeled, modeled very much after the United States. There is a legislative branch, a judicial branch, and an executive branch. And the legislative branch is the General Conference, which generally meets every four years and decides on everything that's going on in the church. But three years ago, we called a special session for this year simply to tackle the issue of human sexuality. Um, as if it's something needs to be tackled. Well, it is. So, basically, what we were, what we were, what people went and voted on, and Methodists came from all over the world to do this, is to vote on whether we would allow LGBTQ plus people um, in the church. Would we allow them to be ordained? Well, they would be allowed, would we allow them to be married in our churches? That was, and if we don't, what happens? And it was a very frustrating process. There were so many things that went on. Of course, the first thing that everyone voted on was the pension fund, because if there was a church separation, people were wondering where the money goes. And it was all really, really frustrating. And the Right Methodist crew watched this all on live stream. It happened over four days. It was the end of February to, to the beginning of March, and we watched it all. And um, they voted whether to allow to pass a plan that would have allowed for LGBTQ plus persons to be part of the church, and it didn't pass. It failed by maybe 30, 40 votes. Um, it was like 52% to 48%, something crazy like that. And, the re and it failed for a lot of reasons. Um, the, probably the biggest reason is if it would have been just the American delegates, it would have passed, but delegates from Africa and from Russia um, kind of were the swaying vote the way that works and it's, it's not necessarily their fault well it is but it isn't but that's a whole complicated history basically russia has like 800 methodists yet they have three bishops so it's a lot of germany that goes on there and african a lot of the african christianity that's been exported there in the last 50 years especially is very anti-homophobic so colonization and gerrymandering they're a bitch everywhere and it didn't pass and you know, what I'm about to say is pretty heavy. Um, I think we've all had someone in our lives close to us that, that, that passed away. Um, I know I have. Um, and, you know, I had a, we had a classmate pass around, pass, pass away this year, RIP Teddy Mallory. Um, but it literally, it was like watching something die. And we watched it die on live stream. And it was one of the most painful things I've ever experienced in my life. And... In the, the six weeks after that, I was a zombie, barely alive, barely, barely kept going. And um, I know I'm probably not getting this all right, but um, that's the best way I can explain it for now. All right, so it's the next day, and I'm in my car, clearly, and I'm about to go work out. And um, I didn't finish the video last night because I was kind of losing daylight, as you might have told. I, I filmed that right about sunset, um, even though I got a good view for a bit. We were losing daylight for that for that video, um, and I don't have a fear of heights, but sometimes, like my body reacts weirdly to heights. I don't know if that makes any sense or not. But, um, um, but so how do I explain all that? Um, I'm not gonna try here. Just know that it was really really hard for me. Um, if you want to really understand kind of what went on at 
United Methodist Center Conference is what's going on in the church right now because a lot has happened since then. It's really crazy, and no one is sure of anything, and, you know, it's a lot. It's a lot of stuff. It affects a lot of people's lives really differently, and it has ramifications for the future of the church, ramifications for the future of America, and also my vocation. You know, this is my career. You know, I kind of saw, it felt for a time, and I felt like I, might, I saw my career die on live stream. So, um, <laughs> so I'm going to recommend Reverend Jeremy Smith on Twitter. I'm going to put his handle right here and his website, Hacking Christianity. Um, Jeremy Smith is a United Methodist clergyman out of Washington, I believe. And he breaks down everything that's going on in the church to me better than anybody to where a lay person can understand it very clearly. And it's been very helpful for me as a student. So I'm going to put his his handle right here, and recommend him on Twitter um, as someone who really can break down this round much better than me, much better than I can. So, but we're figuring things out now. I'm a whole lot better than I was a couple months ago. Um, towards the beginning of May, I just started to feel better. Um, the, the, the cloud of depression lifted, and I had energy again. Um, I wouldn't, the crying spells... Well, not crying. The, the spells where I felt like I wanted to cry for, for like hours at a time, those went away. The kind of the physical symptoms started to like lift, and I started to feel normal again. And thank God. Um, so I've been pretty well for about a month now, and I'm so grateful for that. Um, I've been working out really hard. Taking took off a couple of pesky pounds that came from me overeating and overindulging and stuff. Um, so we're at a good, much better place now. Still trying to figure out a whole lot of stuff, but we're, we're getting to a better place. And I'm so thankful for all of that. Um, and it was a really, really tough semester, but we're winding down. We've got one more to go. One more full semester to go, and then some stuff after that. Some stuff we're still starting to figure out, but we are on the path to graduating. You're back on the path to ordination, hopefully, and um, we're going to get there. We're going to get there, folks. We've come a long way. Um, come a long way in the last two and a half, two years. So, um, onward and upward, as they say. Uh, truth without, as the Bible say. So, I'm going to go ahead and end this vlog here. Thank you guys very much for watching. Um, I'm going to put another link in this, in this video to a speech that this kid named J.J. Warren gave at General Conference 2019. And J.J.'s on Twitter. JJ's on Twitter and he's on YouTube. Give his YouTube channel a follow if you don't follow it already. But I'm going to put a link to the speech he gave at General Conference um, in, this, in this video as well because he deserves it and, he's, and he preaches the gospel much better than I can at this point. So um, thank you very much for watching. Um, we'll have some, vlog, some stuff going up during the summer just so I can get back on the vlog. I'm on the